equals A and B. And the difference is that this, this group in here, we're putting to, they have been putting together some dynamic communities. And those communities mean their regional community, their artistic community, and then their institutional community. And as they have been building their festivals, they're also running their theaters, and they're working with theaters around, in, in Kate's case, a, a geographical region. Um, in Joe's case, it's the city of New York, but a collective of programming for play development that has just been building and building and building for years, and continues to, so it's thriving. Um, and Andy Arthur is the executive director of the theater, South Florida Theater League, and <laughs> Jenny McConnell Frederick is the artistic director of two things. Um, well, DC Cultural, Cultural DC, yeah. Cultural DC, <laughs> and Rorschach. Right, Rorschach Theater. Rorschach Theater. So I thought that in this in this um, context, all of us as writers would probably like to know from these wonderful, wonderful uh, people who have been doing a lot of work for a long time across the country, what, how do they tap into the gestalt to make what they do happen? And by that I mean year in and year out, finding plays that both appeal to their audiences, appeal to them as artists to produce, while at the same time building relationships that I'm sure grow ever wider, uh, especially with social media now, in some ways, taking what Woody had said, to us as writers, and, um, and also making our community of artists better, regardless of where we are. So the good news is that the, that the internet has allowed us to reach, reach beyond, but at the same time, there's something absolutely wonderful about finding our community with, within our own zip code, you know what I mean, or, or within our state, um, or within our institution. So that said, uh, this is Jenny McConnell Frederick from Source Theater, Washington, D.C., Andy Archer, from South Florida Theater League. We, it used to be the Theater League of South Florida. It's gone through three name changes since I've been there, and I'm on my seventh year. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joe Denise, who you met earlier uh, with Naked Angels in New York, and I'd like to know how Naked Angels New York and Naked Angels LA differ or are <coughs> apart at some point. We don't know. Uh, Kate Snodgrass from Boston Playwrights Theater and artistic director of the Boston Theater Marathon and goddess of theater at BU. <laughs> and then Mark Ruthier, um, who is at Orlando Shakespeare Theater. No, Orlando Repertory. Nope. No, Orla I got it right. right. I got it right. Orlando right. Shakespeare Theater and a, a new colleague and friend uh, who I have now met through NMPN and I'm delighted to share the state of Florida with you. <laughs> in order, so we have this time to uh, have, I guess, however you're going to moderate it, and, and then we'll have questions and go from there. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of connecting with community, I think, has become uh, a more dynamic phrase in itself. Uh, the question, I think, used to be, I used to be the literary manager at the Magic Theater in San Francisco, and then I was associate artistic director at Southern Rep. And there's sort of been an evolution of the question, how do we educate our audiences to new plays? And it used to drive me insane. Um, because my answer was always, well, make a good play. And the people that come to see it will say, oh, that was cool. I want to come to see more new plays. Um, but it's a very, very complicated question. And I think now it's, with the idea of connectivity, and that there are theaters out there that are creating departments that are called, you know, our connectivity department, um, and how does one connect with their community? I think is a is a much more dynamic question. 
Um, and I thought that we would kind of move this along in, in three different tiers, which I would love to ask you guys, um, for each of you, how you identify your plays and your playwrights locally and then nationally? You know, and is there is there a ratio between the amount of local people that you would like at your festivals and the amount of national people that you would like at your festivals? How you identify them and how you identify those plays? Do you find the play first and then go to the playwright the other way around? Um, and then I would like to morph that into a conversation about how are you effectively get that word out once you have a festival set up, how you get the word out into the community and create that dynamic relationship between community and festival, community and theater company. And then I'd like to open it up to you guys and find out what it is that is on your minds. So why don't we just start with you, Kate? Okay. And go ahead and talk about the, you know, finding your playwrights and finding your plays Okay. For you know, the university and the theater company. Okay. And, uh, well, it's two different things. The Boston Playwrights Theater is uh, we run the graduate program in playwriting at BU. So our population of playwrights are current students and alums of that program. And how I get the word out is we produce plays by alums of our theater uh, of our playwriting program, and then I send out letters nationally to about seventy theater companies with synopses and some quotes from the newspapers, uh, hopefully, and, uh, uh, and the playwrights contact, and then I let it go because I don't have time to do anything else. And actually that works. Our playwrights get about, I don't know, five or six bites every time I do this. So I, then I forget about it. But I think what you're really, for our purposes in 10 Minute Plays, I run a, a 10 Minute Play marathon every year, now in May, and we produce 50 10-minute plays in 10 hours, and each one is supported by a different theater company from New England. So this, what happens is we get about 400 entries from all over New England. Um, we ask the community at large to read these plays, and we put it in packets of 10. We hand those out to all and sundry. Uh, they read. Three people read the plays, and we get scores back. I put the scores into the computer. I'm the only one who sees them. And then uh, the highest scored ones go to the final three judges that read the plays. Um, and then those plays, that the, those 50 plays, and by the way, I invite some playwrights uh, in the area, like you have to have a New England address. So Teresa Rebeck actually has a house in Vermont. Uh, Bob Brustein lives in the area, uh, Israel Horowitz, etc. So, you know, we have these high profile playwrights, but also everybody else then. So the net for 48 or 45 or whoever um, uh, uh, get into the mix. And then I match up those playwrights and their plays with theater companies. In there's, so there's 50 of them and they vie for these plays at a certain time on a certain day, and I get 50 emails at the same moment <laughs> uh, asking, giving me their top five choices, and then I meet them out as, as that happens. And then the good news is that they rehearse it. They come on this one day. We rehearse. We have a week of technical rehearsals where they have 30 minutes in the, in the theater. Uh, uh, and then we put it all happening on one day. And uh, over the years, we're, next year will be our 17th year, and uh, over 20 of those playwrights that have been, uh, uh, you know, the, play, uh, the, the theater companies have worked with have had their full-length plays done at those theaters. So it, it's a real, you know, the, the key is to hook up the playwrights with the producing entities and to let these people know that a living playwright is not a horrible thing to have in the room with them. <laughs> that's all. That's what happens. That's wonderful. Plus it's, yeah. it's a great so, community builder because all of these 50 mm -hmm. theater companies are coming together on one day and over time. And I have to say, I think Boston, you know, 17 years ago was was starting, uh, it was very laissez-faire, don't, don't touch me and don't don't come near me because I have my actors, I have my plays, but 
you know, I think the time was right for me to ask them, will you come together on this one day and for charity, by the way, all the <coughs> money goes to um, the Theater Community Benevolent Fund. So it doesn't come to us. We're working for free. In fact, everyone is working for free. We only pay the stage manager and the, um, the, uh, the stage managers. And front of house now, because that's a long story. But um, everybody else is working for free. So it's a real community builder. I think we've, you know, we're, we're talking to each other um, and sharing so much. And new plays are starting. There's a renaissance in Boston now uh, with new plays, I'm happy to say. I think that's true. Yes, John? Yes. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, Naked Angels, um, which is the company that I work with and been working with uh, on for about the last 20 years, really. Um, we are, to a great extent, the development company. We produce plays, but the thrust of our work. Um, our engine is really play development. And that is in line with the original mission of the, of, of the company, which is to create theater that uh, is, speaks to today. Um, and how we do that, which is quite community-based and oriented, is through this, uh, what we call a sort of three-step process. The program that I run, uh, Tuesdays at 9, is really, um, it's a, it's, it's a place for writers to hear work that we're currently writing. Uh, it's a place for actors to come to, to read roles. Uh, I've seen actors literally transform uh, from young guys and girls who are you know, sort of just off the bus, and you can see the talent, but there's no craft, and they, there's no sense of where do I live in my body. And just by getting up week after week and cold reading, making quick choices and then just going with it, uh, it's been it's fantastic and exciting and um, it's a privilege to watch. Uh, and uh, you know, it's a community where about 150 people a week gather. We're in a theater downtown uh, called Theater 80, which uh, is we don't have our own theater, so we're sort of itinerant. And um, it's a great space. Uh, and we do about six, seven pieces a night. The second tier of our program is called Angels in Progress. Um, excuse me, it's called First Mondays. And that's a place where a play that's been in development will get its first public reading. Um, and we do that on the first Monday of every, of every month during the season. And then the next step is Angels in Progress. And that is where plays that we've been bringing up through the pipeline will get their first productions. It can be basically a staged reading through a, a, to a full production. And there will be several plays during the course of the of, of, of Angels of Progress, you know, A, B, and C. Um, and so we try to keep this pipeline going, but it really, uh, the doors are open to the whole town or whoever wants to come in, people come in from California or from other parts of the country. Uh, I always like to think of Tuesdays at 9, specifically since it's sort of the ground floor, as uh, a kind of conceptual thing in the terms of who's a part of it. Uh, John Lennon used to say when he was asked about, well, what is the Plastic Ono oh Band? And, you know, who's in the Plastic Ono oh Band? He would say, you're in it. You know, if you want to be. You know, and that's how I kind of feel about Tuesdays at night. You know, if you if you want to be there, you're part of it. There's no membership or anything like that. You know, it's inclusive, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we're successful for as long as we've been. Um, you know, and the company Naked Angels has really gone through evolutions. You know, I mean, when when we first started out. <coughs> it, was a, it was the late 80s, and it was a different city. Uh, and it was a young company of young people just out of school, you know, making marks and getting newsprint and doing work and this and that, and very sort of hip. 
And uh, then we went through a period where we were really known for throwing great benefits. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we would have big parties, right, Morgan? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, then, and then we went broke, which in a way was kind of the best thing that could happen to us because, you know, there's nowhere to go but up. And you take a look at, well, what are we about? And really what we are about is developing work. Um, we have another uh, we have another outlet called Naked Radio, which basically you know they're podcasts of radio plays, uh, which is fantastic because it's almost a lost art, and so writers and performers you know have a new you know have a new old medium to work in, uh, and we are still producing plays not as often as we as we have in the past, but. A couple of years ago, a play that was really got its start uh, at Tuesdays at 9 and went up through the pipeline called Next Fall, ended up being on Broadway and, and uh, nominated for uh, Best Play. So that was, that was gratifying. And it was also really, it was a really wonderful play uh, that spoke to our time. And I think uh, more than anything, that kind of speaks to you know, what we aspire to. Will you talk a little bit about how you find your plays and playwrights? Is there a submission process? Is it mostly through people's? Well, in many ways, they find us. Uh, you know, we, we don't really do any outreach, for instance, going to the ground level of Tuesdays at 9. Uh, we, the doors are open, and the submission process is very old school. Show up with a hard copy of 10 pages of your play, your screenplay, maximum. Uh, if you're a, a fiction writer or, or an essayist or any sort of prose, five pages maximum, uh, and hand the hard copy to me and my producing partner, whose name is Andrea Siri. Uh, and we read everything based on the hard copies. We get about a dozen submissions a week. And uh, through those submissions, uh, we program the evenings. Uh, and then we try and bring the work up through the pipeline. Um, you know, obviously we do receive submissions of plays uh, the way every theater company does, and, you know, we read the plays, and uh, so that's also another avenue. Uh, but we really try to develop our own work through open doors right now. So it's really about showing up. It is, and in a way that's what being a theater artist is. You've got to show up, mm -hmm. you know, and you just have to do a little bit of, el you know, have some elbow grease. Um, so that's, yeah, it is, it's, it's showing up. And it's impossible to put all of these submissions up week after week. So the thing that I look for is a voice. And it, I don't look for craft, I don't look for experience or credits or anything like that. Uh, you don't even have to know how to format a page. If there's a voice, we'll read it. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Let us know a little bit about what you do, Andy. Um, I'm with the South Florida Theater League, and we have our Summer Theater Festival. Um, we are a service organization of 80 theater companies in this area, so ranging from Jupiter to Key West. And we came out about this a little bit different than I think you guys came about it, because we're looking at it at, from the sort of above the, even the general producing level. And our producing theater companies really wanted butts and seats in the summer. Um, there's a sense that people that live in, you know, Florida, you have the snowbird audience who goes up to New York, and but there's people here year-round. How can we let them know that there's all sorts of cool playwriting or theater happening, local playwrights? And so we started Summer Theater Festival. Um, and the last year, we for the first time, we had a reading series. So every Monday night, from June until August, there's at least one reading by a local playwright. Um, and how we sort of started that last year, it was going to theater companies that we thought would you know, naturally make sense. Um, City <coughs> Theater would be one that we've gone to. Um, Juan's a local playwright who's looking right at me, who has a reading come up, coming up in a couple of weeks. And sort of, sort of like making it as easy as possible sort of to match theater companies with artists, uh, since it was sort of trying to get it off the ground and letting folks know, since that was the biggest part for us. Um, this year, for the first time, we had an open submission process. It was blind submissions. Um, I, that was my choice because I wanted folks to choose with not regard to uh, gender or name or race or just sort of trying to get as 
line as possible. Um, it did not work as well as I hoped it would. Um, we only had two submissions chosen from the pool that we got. Um, now, when you say you only have two submissions chosen, is that through the process by which that you choose plays? By which they chose plays. So the theater companies choose the plays that they want to work on. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. That could be clearer. Um, so each individual theater company would choose the play that they want to work with. So if City Theater is going to do Suzy West Falls play, because, you know, Suzy is their literary manager and she has a really great play she wants to do. And it's long. And it's long. <laughs> um, that she can't do it normally right. for City Theater thing. Um, my theater company is doing my play. Um, but a lot of times, like, Ricky Martinez is the, is he in here? No. No, he's not. Um, he's, um, like, he's the artistic director of New Theater, so he did the play of his in last year's festival. And a lot of times, Theater companies have playwrights that they had loved working with, or they have playwrights that they had wanted to work with. Um, Maltz Jupiter Theater, who did a reading for the first time this year, really wanted to work with Christinos Brown. Like, they came to me really early on and said, we want to be a part of the series, we really want to work with this playwright. And so, a lot of those matchups happen that way, as opposed to theaters picking from this pool that we had available to them. Um, which, so my advice to all of you is be friend with theater companies, which I know is, is difficult. So do you, as the South, the South Florida League? South Florida Theater League. Theater League. Um, so you guys accept submissions? We accept submissions and then I distribute uh, them to the theater. disseminate them to the theaters. Do you think that like, all of them get disseminated to all of the theaters? Distributed to all, all of the All the theaters that want to participate in the festival, yes. Okay. And so you don't look at them and say, oh, I think these guys would like this play, and these guys would like this I did play. that last year. Um, I, would, I think I'm going to do it again, <laughs> to be honest, and try to help that process a little bit more. I was trying to make it as open to folks as possible, because last year when I said, hey, you would like to see this playwright, or you might want to look at this play, I got pushback from some of the theater companies who didn't feel that this was, you know. Would you force it on me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's, it's a weird balance since we're not actually doing the producing. So it's not, I'm sure it's similar to what you do, is it's sort of, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious about your submission process. I'm like, hmm. Or like, it's blending fine. what you're doing. It's okay. Fine. Yeah. So all, all of it. And yeah. And then once the theater company signs on, though, they sign on. So if right. they don't get their first five choices, they have to do their sixth or seventh. Okay. Or, or a choice that, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting difference because you're talking about a, a theater com company coming from Bangor, Maine, yeah. to come and get visibility in Boston. Right. Who, you know, Bostonites might be heading up that way for the summer or right. whatever. Right. And you know, I, I should. I have program. I'll show you all at some point. Um, yeah. All the companies get a paragraph about themselves and. They can buy ads. It's you know it's very very helpful to them stumping for their sure. their summer season or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you're sending playwrights out to theaters that are already established yeah. in the Florida area. Right. And hoping that there's going to be a match. Right. Hoping and I, that somebody finds a home theater. Yeah. It's some place to work. You know, which yeah. I'm sure as playwrights, it's an incredibly valuable thing to have as a theater that is like. I'm embracing you. Do some come come to my theater and do work. Mm -hmm. Will you tell us a little bit about what's going on with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I uh, run Source Festival, which is a three-week summer festival in Washington D.C. We produce uh, three full-length plays, eighteen ten-minute plays, and then three artistic blind dates. Uh, the artistic blind dates are interdisciplinary, devised collaborations that happen over about four months. Um, the floor, and we, all of our plays are centered around three different themes each year. So our first step in our process is to uh, solicit the full-length plays. Anyone who's been, uh, and we do that by invitation, mostly just because we don't have the scale of readers to have an open call, um, but we uh, invite any playwright that's been produced by the festival. The festival's been around for seven years, now, um, so that list is ever-growing, and hopefully we'll continue that process, but we'll see how long that list gets. Um, so anyone who's been produced in the festival gets an invitation, and then we use a spotter system where we reach out to people, maybe some of you even, um, and ask for recommendations of um, playwrights you think are great and are really exciting that we should extend an invitation to. So we're inviting playwrights to submit the play of their choice. We're not soliciting a specific play from a playwright. 
Um, and then we do a couple of other things, like we reach out to NNPN, and, and the NNPN affiliated playwrights are invited. Um, people, playwrights in the DC metro area are also invited to submit openly to the full length plays. Um, and then you can also submit uh, a request for an invitation. So it's almost an open invitation and almost an open submission process, but not quite. Um, we have a team of about 100 readers that helps us read and evaluate all the plays. Um, we select the three that are going to be in the season. Um, that happens in the late fall, early winter. And then we um, put out a call, this is a totally open call, for 10-minute plays around those three themes. Um, so whether playwrights choose to submit plays they've already written on those themes or to write specifically towards those themes, you know, either is fine. Uh, we go through two rounds of readers, um, each about 100 readers total, reading these six to 700 plays that we get submitted each year. Um, and then we end up with a festival after all of that selection process. Um, the artists and the devised collaborations are also, uh, also come via an open call. They can submit kind of artistic statements. We have a panel that helps vet them. And we pair them up into three uh, groups of three artistically diverse matches. Uh, we're talking about like dancers, choreographers, musicians, painters, jugglers, <coughs> tap dancers, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then they have about four months and very little money um, to create whatever they want. Uh, we also give them one of the full length plays to read, and so they, there should be some linkage to whatever that theme is. Um, and we're very open. Those those pieces are very uh, DIY, and they get performed um, in our rehearsal hall upstairs in the smaller venue. Uh, and they're only about 20 minutes long, and they're followed by a talk back with the audience at each performance. So really what we end up with are three different kinds of explorations of three themes. A long form, uh, six versions of a short form and 10-minute play, and then a devised exploration of that same theme. I think that's covers what we do. <laughs> so how long is your festival? Three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. It closes tomorrow if anybody wants to get in the yeah. car right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. Um, and how do you go about choosing your themes? Um, you know, really we choose the plays first and then pull the themes out of the, So we don't select the full-length plays to a theme. We select the full-length plays that speak to the kind of work we wish to produce. Um, and then pull whatever we feel like the dominant themes are out of those to work with each other. So um, we'll go backwards this time. How are you finding uh, your connection with the community? And are you getting more and more people coming? And how do you make that happen? Right. Well, I can't say that we've like figured that out totally, but. Um, we, uh, the connection to the community has been great, um, and I think one of the goals of Source Festival overall is to help build community and to help people put down roots, and that's why so many pieces of our festival are, are open call. You don't have to know somebody to be a part of our festival, um, and that's true of the actors and the playwrights and even the directors of the full length plays. We do an open call for full length play directors, which nobody does, <laughs> so that's, that's a really cool opportunity, um, and we get a lot of really interesting people, and part of the reason we produce so much work is so that um, those people have a, a huge base of people to interact with. We are, in many cases, people's first professional opportunities in DC, particularly for the actors and for some of the directors of the 10 minutes. Um, and I think that's a really important launch pad where people are starting to make the friends and build the connections that will keep them in Washington and keep them producing there. Um, and there's just a really long list of our alumni that are still working and producing and, and doing amazing things in Washington. So it's a big Is it predominantly uh, local? Uh, other than the playwrights, yes. So the designers, the actors, the directors are all DC based, um, but the call for plays and the invitation for submission is all that, you know, a national call. And is there, what's the ratio of DC playwrights to outside playwrights? Uh, maybe, it, it depends, yeah, it totally depends year to year, but I would say maybe on average it's like 25%, maybe less, actually, of DC playwrights. So it tends to be more nationally based with a handful of people from DC. Thanks. So Andy, um, your relationship to the community is a little bit different because your relationship is predominantly with playwrights. Mm -hmm. But how do you continue to find them? And, and how do you cultivate that relationship and hold on to them and keep moving it forward and growing it? Do I have a relationship with playwrights? I think a lot of it is reaching out to like folks that are coming out of um, write, like not writing programs with the um, University, uh, Michael Yanni, who's sitting over there, like he sent me a lot of his students who are fantastic writers, and I've uh, asked them to submit. Um, it's letting folks know that a lot of word of mouth 
building community, and then folks who come to the readings often. So like those, those people will be like, oh, how do I get involved in this? And so then I'll be like, oh, great, submit, let me know, like submit a play, or let me know, here's what the theater league. Um, and then we do theater league events throughout the year that also sort of cultivate local writers and allow local writers to meet with actors and other folks that are in the profession to try and sort of build that. So you need a Florida, a South Florida. Yeah, you need South Florida. Florida. Yeah. And then do you ever pimp to Northern Florida? <laughs> uh, not really. We could get better about that. I used to be more in touch with uh, Autumn, what was it? The organization that was sort of like the Central Florida Arts Organization. I don't know. Like Central not Florida it. Theater Alliance? Yes, thank you. Which is now, was Red Chair and is now Orlando Plays, I think. I'm not sure. It, it's, it's gone through number of it's the same um, basic deal, but it keeps changing. So, you know, <laughs> sorry. If we just had to fill out paperwork to go to the new website, then one of the things okay. like we allow you to sell discount tickets or last minute tickets, things like that. So. Yeah, just trying to connect with those folks, so sort of like letting people know what's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try to get those people to know what's happening down here. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Joe, how about you? In terms of community uh, yeah, in terms relationships, of, you know, who's coming to see? Who's coming to the work on Tuesdays at nine? Well, you know, is there is it predominantly industry people? Is there a community in your neighborhood that shows up? Actually, I do my best to you know politely and discreetly and discourage the industry per se. You know, as far as casting direct directors, producers, uh, think you know people like that um, to protect. It sounds pretentious, but to protect the integrity of the evening because it really is reliant, it being the work and the um, so the delivery of the work for the writers to hear is reliant upon a kind of freedom that um, any sort of audition-minded actor or writer it will be inhibited by. Uh, I mean, what needs to have, you know. What I'm saying is, if you feel like there's industry people there, and oh, this agent or that producer or that casting director, and you're distracted by that, you're going to play it safe, um, and uh, that's not what it's about. And also, in terms of you know writers, it's a pl they, a writer has to feel like I can bring something in as rough and raw as 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 I need as where I'm at right now. Uh, and not be worried about, you know, well, this literary manager here, they're, they're going to judge me um, on, based on this. I mean, my one of, a long-time participant um, is a wonderful writer named Jackie Reingold. And Jackie writes for theater, she writes for television, um, but she really will use Tuesdays in, in, in such a pure way. She came in one night, and she had 10 pages, uh, and... Uh, and uh, we cast it, and she, so she, in setting it up and providing context for what we're about to hear, she said, so this, these are like three separate, unconnected, dis disconnected scenes, and it's really not going to make sense to anyone, but I'm tracking this character, and I need to hear this character. And, you know, it was not utter disregard for the audience, but, uh, but for the participants, audience participants, but bringing us into her process of this is where I'm at with my work, uh, and, and this is what I need to do, and this is how this evening is a tool for me, you know. So, um, you know, and, and I encourage that. I encourage that because it, it's what keeps it alive, and it's what uh, keeps everyone excited and feeling safe. And it is a great community because there is a, a strong social aspect of it. Um, there's always, we, we don't do a Q&A or anything like that. This is really just for the writers, as I've said. But, you know, afterwards, there's a, always a bar at whatever venue we're at, so there's a bar connected to the theater that we're uh, in right now. And, you know, there's, there are wonderful discussions afterwards about what we've heard and what you're working on and what about that play that you brought in two weeks ago. And uh, so, and it is a community. I hear it over and over again from participants. Uh, I'm so grateful for this. You know, it anchors my week because we're disconnected. You know, we're totally disenfranchised. I mean, you'd think, oh, New York City, you know, theater at the hub of, of it all. No, we're all disenfranchised artists. We're writers, you know, living in a room with a keyboard alone, 
you know, miserable. <laughs> and, you know, and actors reliant upon audiences to, you know, make, make you know, let, so I can do what I do. Uh, and, you know, without that, and where, what do you do? Who do you connect with? So it does very much provide that. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't think that's pretentious at all. <laughs> I think that, that you know, creating a safe environment for people to work in is incredibly important. And um, I, I'm happy that uh, I've been running Tuesday since 2001, I guess. And, uh, you know, wonderful, what, I mean, I've seen great, you know, plays come out of it. Uh, it's very gratifying, um, and it's a lot of fun. You know. So are you guys aspiring to get to a place where you do great parties again? <laughs> you know, there's a danger in that. Um, uh, we have we have one f little fundraiser uh, at the end of the season right now, uh, and we're fortunate in that we are now affiliated with the New School, what had been for decades the New School for Social Research, research and is now New School University. So um, they've become a, a partner. Uh, which has sort of financial advantages for us, as well as um, there's you know a symbiotic relationship. We have influx of uh, kids from the school. We have a place for our archive and everything you know else that we've accumulated over 27 years. Um, so we keep the parties small, and um, you know just kind of focus on the work a little bit more now. Gotcha. Um, Kate, it sounds like you guys have uh, a good dynamic relationship especially with Boston. We do. I've heard great things about Boston. I, I lived there 20 years ago and there were you know, it was like ART was over there and Huntington was over there. And, you know, there were, yeah. for me, and now wasn't. it's and, everywhere. And now it yes. seems like there's a lot of really good stuff happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, uh, yeah. I think uh, any more, we're all talking to each other. I can call up ART and go, you know, uh, uh, I need a piano. Do you have a piano? You know, without the insides that I could borrow, and they go, sure, here's this, and Huntington the same way, and they're calling us, asking, you know, uh, do you have so-and-so, or can you introduce me to, do you know this playwright? And I'll say, yes, I do, because they entered the Boston Theater Marathon um, uh, three years ago, and they're fabulous, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, I, I think, as you know, the community has changed over time, and the people who are, um, uh, submitting have changed over time. They're better writers. Ten-minute plays, you know, everybody knows sort of how to write one. I know that, uh, looking at Gary over here, I invite Gary every year. Once I realized that he had a New England address. <laughs> we are, Gary, Gary has a, a, and by the way, he can't, he doesn't know how to write a bad ten-minute play. So I get a great play from him every year, and then suddenly he becomes head of the Dramatist Guild, and then the Dramatist Guild is in Boston, and all of those playwrights know more about it. It's so much, there's so, it's like connecting, connecting, connecting. Everybody just, you know, it's like this all the time. We have more and more women are in the marathon every year, which I'm, like almost half of the plays this last year were written by women. And over half were new playwrights that had never been in the marathon before. And this is because of blind submissions. Uh, we don't know who wrote it, but oh my god, it was a good play. And uh, yeah, uh, does that me, answer that, sort of? It uh, just made me think of having blonde submissions. <laughs> and blonde submissions. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets you right, and whatever gets you right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, it does answer my question. Um, you know, just, just how do you, you know how do you go about making that dynamic relationship within your theater, within the community of playwrights, and then within the larger community, right. the larger community. And I think you know, through the marathon, uh, uh, the day before the the big marathon of the 50 10 minute plays, we do three full length plays that the theater companies at the Boston Center for the Arts support. So every time we have three uh, uh, full lengths that are, again, connecting with the Huntington Theater Company, Speakeasy, and um, uh, usually it's Company One, in various, you know, these are small, medium, and large theater companies that, you know, every year are, are seeing new plays. So uh, yeah, it's a great weekend, and 
I, I think the companies are becoming more and more used to new plays, which is why more new plays are being done in Boston. It just keeps going bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, we only have about 10 minutes left, so I would like to open it up to you guys. Um, if you have any questions for any of these folks, yes, sir. Kate, how many seats in the theater were the Miracles performed? Oh, it's such a good question, because we used to do it at our little theater, which right. has two black box, and we used to cram them in, and, and so we could see 230, counting both theaters. And we used to, the actors used to do the play in this hour, in oh. this theater, and then move to the second theater and do it here. So if you stayed in one, it was a gas. It was really <laughs> fun. And fun for the actors, because they got to do it twice. Right. So if you sat in one theater all day, you'd see all the plays. But it got so that the lines were so long, uh, people said, oh, I'm not going to go, because it's, you know. So we moved, the Huntington uh, has, gives us the space, not exactly free, but we don't pay rent. We have to pay their people. Um, so we, lo we lose giving to the charity, but we can see 360 all day, and the actors just get to do it once. But we get more people in. And they can come and go all day long. So you don't have to sit for the whole 10 hours. You can, you got an all day pass. <laughs> I'll stay here all day. Watch <laughs> 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 so yeah. yeah. 10 hours. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 Other questions? Yes. Um, how much does uh, social media ha uh, impact your building of community? And um, you know, over the years, obviously, it's, it's the landscape has changed a lot. And do each of you have someone dedicated to social media within your company? For us, it, it, it's very useful because we, you know. We have about 150 artists involved each year, and they're our street team. You know, they're putting out their words to their networks and their friends, and so that's a huge piece of the puzzle. And um, I do have uh, independent contractors essentially that are working as my associate producers, and one of them is always one piece of their enormous job is to do social media. Um, I work with the theater companies themselves, so like some of our more resourceful theater companies are able to sort of like really get the ground running and have Twitter and Facebook and do that uh, in addition to what I'm able to do. But since I am the only employee at my organization, I, yeah, sometimes stuff gets lost. So. I mean, yeah, it's very helpful, you know, just, to, it's helpful in the moment, uh, you know, you can get, send out an e-blast on your site if, you know, something's coming up or, um, and it's helpful for the chatter that everyone generates and, um, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's very interesting, um, it, it connects us, I mean, this is sort of a bigger philosophical thing, it connects us and at the same time, I'm always a little bit, feeling like, ah, but where's the, where are the people, you know, can, you know colliding, so, you know, I, I don't know, I think it's useful, but, I don't. We've, um, we used to have postcards that we mailed out and spent a lot of money doing that, and now we don't spend the money, we just do Facebook and uh, internet yes. stuff, and, yeah, and radio, things mm -hmm. like that, um, and, and we get just as many people there. Uh, my goal is to get those long lines at the theater where we are now. But I know that people twit. Twit? No, you tweet. <laughs> just shows so, you what I'm doing. What I feel about it. Listen, you read some of them and you think, oh, twit. <laughs> right, they do. And I'm sure it helps. But Facebook has been, you know, a, a, a good to save us some money. Um, well, I actually have a couple of things. I, I first want to say, I know Gary and John and um, our playwrights who submit to us, and when I, I will read a play at, before I'll go back and look at the bio or the production history, and I can't tell you how many times Source Festival comes up, Boston Theater Mar Marathon comes up, Naked Angels comes up, and that was why it was important this year for us to get you guys in this room with us, mostly because I wanted to know. <laughs> Who were the other people crazy enough to do this? <laughs> so there would be that. But the other thing I'm curious about, because Steve Yaffe is here, and he's one of your full lengths, and he was beginning to describe to me how you found the theme, and then how, how quickly, once you know what those themes might be, do you, do you call out for 10 minute plays, and how quickly do you turn that 
little process around. Right. Um, this actually was the first year that we've done it in two different in, in, in two different rounds. We used to select the full lengths and the ten minutes concurrently, and then try to muscle some themes out of what we ended up with, and that was much more difficult. So we switched the process to select the full lengths first and then the ten minutes. But the call for the full lengths goes out of the invites in probably August. We had those selected and put out the call for ten minutes by December 1st, and I think the 10 minutes were then due in, so players had about four weeks over the holidays mm -hmm. to submit their plays. Um, and then we started reading at the beginning of January, and we had the full lineup announced by March for the 10 minutes. So it was all very quick. I'm hoping in this coming year we can stretch that out a little bit, give players a little more than four weeks to turn around plays, um, and hopefully at least get that stretched a little bit, now that we kind of know what we're doing a little bit. Um, but it's all a very fast process. And in the meantime, you're running another theater. Right, Rorschach Theater, yeah. And Rorschach does another project which is relevant here um, called Clexography. And we took it from the model of a 24-hour play project, but we wanted to stretch it out and make the plays maybe a little better, to be judgmental totally. Um, but we uh, come up with uh, usually six playwrights, um, a whole team of judge directors and designers. We have prompts, and the playwrights have about 24 hours to write a play. We do a development workshop in one afternoon, and then they write another draft of it. And then we spend the week uh, fully staging, directing, and designing them, and then we have a two-night or one-night run with two performances. Um, so that's another way we're engaging our playwrights mm -hmm. and our community and the people. That's only DC artists, really. So. That's, great. that's great. Yes. I used to live in Boston, but now I live in Tampa. And it strikes me that almost everybody in the panel is saying that they're not available to me. Uh, the only one who seems available is Naked Angels. And to, to utilize Naked Angels, one more or less has to be in Manhattan and walk in. You can submit send this to me. We, you totally welcome to do that. Oh, at the source? Yeah. All right. Um, so I was going to ask Mark. Yeah. You're, you're at Orlando Shakespeare. Can you talk to your availability to Florida? Writers? Absolutely. We uh, we don't have a rolling submission process. We try to find all of the plays that we put on our stage uh, through our play festival, Play Fest, in November. Um, and if you go to our website, we usually have a March 1st deadline. And we used to have a very specific uh, submission criteria criteria that was about, you know, you either had to have a Shakespeare theme or it had to be about a Florida theme or about somebody famous. And um, forgive me <coughs> for saying this to anybody who's an academic in the room. We were getting a lot of academic plays. Um, and I convinced Jim to just open up the process to uh, plays that, that uh, examined urgent social issues, um, which pretty much opens it up to everything. Um, and uh, we will accept plays from everyone. So the only, the only thing about us is that you have to send us a 10-page uh, page sample, a hard copy of a 10-page sample still, so we're, a little, we're still a little old school. And then we will ask for you know, a PDF of your, of your full length, because we get about 450 submissions of 10-page of, uh, um, 10 page samples, and we just don't have the infrastructure to read that many plays. So we like to uh, bring that down to about 100. Um, so yes, absolutely go to Orlando Shakespeare Theater, uh, orlandoshakespeare.org, and um, click on Playfest, and you'll see what the submission policy is, and absolutely send me something. Great, thank you. Yeah. Gary. I just want to say what I was struck by, because I've, I've worked with Kate's Theater, or Kate in the Boston Theater Marathon many times. I've been to Joe's Tuesday at Nines several times. I've been to the Jenny's Source and the Devise Theater and the Tim and the Play Is that you all, and I'm sorry, I haven't been to any of those. That's okay. Just <laughs> start. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, you just let me know when to go. All right. <laughs> so, okay, you you serve community at okay. two levels. There's this whole community of writers that you serve, be they in your local area, but nationally or regionally or whatever it happens to be. But then you also bring, I mean, I know for a I've been there, that you bring in a whole community of people that have nothing to do with writing. And what's lovely about that is that you're able to look, for example, at the Boston Theater Marathon and see in 50 plays that there's no right or wrong way to write a play. Mm -hmm. that, that you have 50 examples of 
the way ideas are expressed, or Tuesdays at 9, for example, when I said that there are so many ways that people express ideas, or at the source, with the device, you see that there. And that's what's so glorious about what I think is in it. It's that it defies definition. That's the gamut. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Productions, too. It's that, that there's not 50 ways, there's not only one way to produce a play. There's right. a multitude of ways. That's right. right. That's right. And that if the same play were given to the company that's in Bangor, Maine, or given to the company that's in Vermont, it would be a different play. They wouldn't be doing it the same way. That's right. Which is so rich for the playwright to experience. Um, I would love to uh, thank the four of you. Um, and I'd also like to just um, give you great kudos for this weekend because this is a, this is an amazing uh, combination of, of local people and national people that you've brought together here and um, I couldn't be more pleased to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you all very much for your time. Thank you.